The scripture today is very clear in what it is teaching. It says, avoid immorality. Avoid immorality. So if you're living an immoral life, you really should stop, you know. It's not good. It's kind of a simple message, I guess. It says the body is not for immorality. Well, we know that. I mean, we're a people of faith. We have come to understand that. I would venture to say most of us, I'll say all of us, are probably living a pretty moral life. I basically say that. If I'm venturing a general all-around judgment. But I know that most of us here today remember something that happened back in the 60s and the 70s. It was called the sexual revolution. Remember that? The sexual revolution. You know, the 60s and the 70s were very strange. I mean, of course, I kind of grew up in that era. And um, it was strange. There's no doubt about that. I mean, you got you know, Woodstock 69, you had rock music. Everybody was pushing the envelope. I mean, everybody was jumping around, and there were drugs and alcohol and all kinds of stuff. And so the formal definition of the so-called sexual revolution was a social movement that challenged traditional codes of behavior related to sexuality and interpersonal relationships. That's kind of putting it mildly. But that's a general definition in, in the history books, if you want to put it that way. Throughout the developed Western world. It was happening throughout the Western world. And that's pretty much all we really knew, I would think, the Western world. you know. And so when you think about throughout the Western world, from the 1960s to the 1970s, some of the ramifications of that basically were manifested. For example, sexual liberation included increased acceptance of sex outside of traditional heterosexual monogamous relationships. Now that's a mouthful, but we know what that means. We know what that means. And so basically that means primarily marriage. Primarily marriage. There was a lot of experimentation going on. There were a lot of commune, communes, all different kinds of alternative lifestyles and everything. And the question to be asked, why did that all happen that way? One theory that I heard is we got rich enough and affluent enough to afford to do all that stuff. If you want to look at it that way. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Now, say for example the term sexual revolution. Now, we think that that probably originated in the 60s and 70s, but actually when you do a little historical research, the term sexual revolution uh, came about since the late 1920s. Since the late 1920s. Now, some of us here might have been around in the 1920s. I don't know. I mean, you know, 1920s. That's a pretty long time ago. But do you remember this? The Roaring Twenties. It was called the Roaring Twenties. Matter of fact, as a little kid, I remember there was actually a TV show called the Roaring Twenties. You all remember that? It's kind of vague. I have not heard of it since, you know, but I thought that was, was very, very interesting. The Roaring the Roaring Twenties. The flappers and the dappers. A flapper. You know what a flapper is? Kind of like a floozy sort of lady that kind of danced around uh, and scattily dressed, which was scandalous back in the 20s. I mean, everybody was pretty moral back then, you know. Dapper. And then there's Dapper Dan, you know. And then there was, do you remember? Well, this was not the 20s, it was a little bit later. The zoot suit. Remember that, the zoot suit? You know, I mean, that's, I mean, that's like historical stuff, you know, the zoot suit. My father wore a zoot suit. Okay? I'm not making any accusations, but my mother and my father were dancers. Okay, they danced halls and everything like that. But you know, they were young. You know, just like anybody else back in the 
Let's see, for them it would have been what? <laughs> a 40s? Whatever, yeah, a 40s, a 30s, and a 40s. Whatever, okay. Now, <laughs> I'm going to say that's not funny. I don't know why I'm laughing, but anyway, some people just like sin. They like it. <laughs> for a number of different reasons, okay? But then there was this other concept, which is, which is pr pretty interesting. We all probably remember this, free love. What is free love? You know? It's almost like saying, well, love has a price. It's going to cost you. If you're going to love, it's going to cost you. Free love. Well, I think we kind of know what that means, but I'm not going to get into that. Okay? Free love. There was actually a song when I was doing my research and everything. I came across this song. I don't know who sung it. I don't even know the group. But the words were kind of interesting. It says this. Look what's right there. Love power. Love, love power. We can always choose to use it if we dare. Love power, love power. And we find it in the memories we share. And we need it like the sun and light and air. You know, that's kind of true, right? If you want to neutralize it. <laughs> but I think the song was talking about other stuff too. I don't know. I didn't do, I didn't go into further research. But anyway. So, and then we hear this in the scripture today, okay? And this kind of puts us on an even keel regarding our faith, okay? It says, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? Therefore, glorify God in your body. Well, that's Christianity. I mean, that's basically what we believe. That's what we're called to do in a very difficult world where there's a lot of temptations, a lot of dazzle and razzle and a lot of things in the media and so on and so forth. So, but that still holds true even till today. And beyond. And so I guess it's this. It's not the sexual revolution, but the Jesus revolution is what the world needs. Amen.